up, you guys? Jazz Satyad here in Singapore. Thank you so much for joining me. It is the Night Owl Podcast. Really glad that you guys are here. And as always, I am teaching from my own experience, from what's going on around me. And I'm actually listening to all of you guys, too. So your comments, your your DMs, uh, if you see me in the street, if you message me on Messenger, on Twitter, any of those things, I note all of those things. I try really hard to keep up with all of the messages. Sometimes I fail, sometimes I do okay, but the most part, I'm trying really hard to make sure that I am here for you guys as much as possible. I'm trying to stay relevant relevant with all my content. So today, unfortunately, is not a pleasant podcast episode. It's not that I'm upset. I'm kind of sad. Um, But I do want to talk about this a little bit because it's fresh in my mind. And I think I can be objective enough to be able to convey the message eloquently enough for you to understand. So as you all know, I love the way that I market on my page. I love the posts that I create. I love the images that I make. Yes, Some of the images are actually from stock photos. Some of them are pieces of, you know, um, illustrations that I've seen on Pinterest or somewhere else. But I try really hard to make sure that they are distinct enough that they stand out. So I have a way that I create my work, right? So today, unfortunately, I came across a page that was using some of my content, the, the images. And even though the images did not match up with the words that she used, it still hurt my feelings a little bit because this is somebody I know. This is somebody who knows me. Okay, somebody that I used to work with, someone that I trained before uh, for a job that has nothing to do with mental health. But the fact is, she knows me. She physically knows me. We've spent time together. So it hurt my feelings. So when I saw the fact that she was using my post, I went ahead and I looked at the post. I looked at the caption. The caption had nothing to do with the, the picture that I originally used. And um, I commented on the post itself and I said, hey, thank you so much for posting my work. I really appreciate that you shared it. And I just left it at that. It was nothing bad. I was thanking her. I was being gracious. And then all of a sudden I get a message from her in my DM saying, hey, you know what? Um, Yeah, I hope you don't mind. I'm just copying a little bit, sis, because for social media, I just want to educate. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. But if you don't mind, please credit me because my work is copyrighted. Okay, as in like my work, my my idea, this message that I'm trying to convey with the the picture combined with the the phrase or the the caption is copyrighted and then it also has my watermark on there and that's the part I want to talk about here so she went to great lengths to hide where she got the images from but my images are very very bold they're very vibrant in color you can tell where the image came from if anyone knows my account y'all know when it's one of my pictures okay you've seen it's very bold and very distinct so she had taken the pains to actually enlarge the picture to the point that she could actually crop out the watermark and still keep the picture in the caption itself now she did not do this on just one post she did this on two posts and then her caption had nothing to do with what i was talking about or what the message i was trying to convey was but the fact is i simply asked if she would tag me or at least credit me saying the image came from this person this is the message i see when i see the image that would have been fine i would have been fine but that's not what happened now I want to make sure people understand. I have tried my best to stand out against everybody else when it comes to the way that they create the images for Instagram. Let's face it, Instagram is basically a big album, okay? Instagram is this place where we put up pictures of ourselves or captions or quotes or whatever it is, things that we kind of want to earmark, flag, bookmark, whatever, to remind ourselves of things that we enjoy or, you know, document events in our lives or milestones that we achieve any of those things and I think it's really really important that each of us have our own style so when I first started marketing on Instagram that was back when everything was peach pink rose gold with black lettering on it that was all it was everything every page every account that I had been affiliated with or had you know copied not copied but watched as I you know was building my business was the same color same font, same font color, same background, okay? And it was all the same. And I wanted to be different. I wanted to be very, very bold. Now, I come from a generation where we used to have those motivational posters that were, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, and then it would have, uh, you know, a motivational quote along the bottom of it. And it was very, very fine. It was almost like fine print. So you'd have, um, I can't remember, um, <clears throat> but you have all kinds of stuff like the 212 degree, 212 degrees. Um, what was it? It's, it's very iconic. And I say that tongue in cheek, obviously, because I love iconic as a brand iconic, I K O N I C K. I think it's CK anyway, but I love that brand and the things that they're doing with motivational posters, like, you know, stuff that you can hang in your, in your home that is reminiscent of the kinds of inspiration that you're looking for in, in, you know, and it's very stylistic. It's beautiful. It's very, very elegant. And I love it. So 
it's not your cheesy posters that you you know you you get sometimes on uh, calendars stuff like that it's actually really well thought out and very beautiful so in the same vein before I actually discovered iconic I was trying to do this on my page and where everybody else was this rose gold pink peach kind of thing going on I was trying to be vibrant and different and I know I got a lot of people to you know um rate my page, audit my page, give me tips and pointers on how I could get more viewership or how I could, you know, reach more people. And eventually people were just like, you know what? I like it. It's different. It's very different. It stands out from the rest of everything that you've done and everything that everyone else is doing at the moment. And I, you know, I think it's, it's you, it's very you. So when I put up anything on my page, really please know that I have taken great pains to find the picture that best expresses what it is in my heart and then to find a word that embodies the feeling of what I'm about to explain and then the caption itself it takes me a while to write so while I have taken a seat you know a back seat on posting on my feed itself I use my stories a lot more right now because I'm trying to you know redevelop um, this idea that I have for my feed I'm, I'm going through another brand re-imaging kind of thing I'm not changing the brand at all I'm just kind of upgrading a little bit I've been doing this for so long now I have like I don't know so many thousands of let me see I have I think gosh I have 1500 almost 1500 posts on my page and I purposely did not delete anything off of there um, unless of course it belongs to my daughter's account so you know pictures from her of her when she was little stuff that I think was redundant you know things I've posted once or twice or many times over I've changed but other than that if you scroll to the bottom of my feed and go all the way up slowly, you can see the progression of my brand. You can see how I suddenly emerged as this, you know, this idea, this feeling. And that's why I wanted to create the brand that I did. I purposely did not delete any of those things. But for me to see people using my work, and it's not just, okay, this is not the first time. I've had people use pictures that I've used on Facebook before um, as if they were posting on their own. And some of them went to great lengths to actually post um, pictures that I had posted in my stories on Facebook as if they were there with me because they had the picture. I've had so many scares along the way about, you know, whether I should be posting this, that or the other. And, you know, is it safe? Are people going to hack me? Are people going to stalk me? Are people going to come after me? But all of that I have tried to keep in perspective and understand that, okay, I am doing something for the greater good. Yes, there is a certain amount of risk with it. And so I've kind of changed into this, uh, this brand that kind of embodies all of the ideas that I try to live in real life, I'm not projecting anything. I'm not fronting. I'm not, you know, putting up a facade. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm just being myself. And so because it's blood, sweat and tears, this is actually my life. I, I have... <sighs> I have been offended on more than one occasion. I have had so many people, I, I think people know my voice by now. They know uh, the kinds of things that I talk about because I've been talking about them for over five years now. And I have many people who will come to me and say, hey, you know what? I love your podcast. I just want you to know so-and-so has started a podcast and they're starting to sound like you a little bit. Do you know this person? I'm thinking, yes, I do. Or no, I don't. Or whatever the case may be. I've had many people come and tell, tell me these things. I've had people actually steal my words and pretend that it came out of their mouths. And this is why I stopped actually using quotes and started actually writing out a microblog instead. I want to make sure that people understand this is who I am. This is from my life. This is from my brain. And as much as flattery is um, a, f a form of a comp sorry flattery my gosh what am I saying as much as copycatting is a form of flattery if you don't credit the source it kind of defeats the purpose now whenever I talk about you know uh, the five love languages I do mention Gary Chapman when I talk about you know the way I feel about mental health I do mention the people that inspire me I do say Mastin Kip and I do say Tony Robbins and I do say E.T. the hip-hop preacher I do say uh, you know all of these people that have come before me that have also paved the way and I want to make sure that I give credit where credit is due. I learn a lot, a lot on a daily basis. I consumed vast amounts of content. I, I, I want to be as inclusive as possible. I've been to classes with Ashley Zahabian when she first started talking about emotional health and I realized that this is how I felt about emotional intelligence and she was the only one at the time that was really talking about it. She had a TED talk at the time. It was recent to when she released her TED talk and you know what? I've since then befriended her, I've spoken to her on multiple occasions, and I've helped her with some of her research, I've attended her classes, I have promoted her work, I just, 
I get to know these people. I know when I speak to Bobby Maximus, he's a great friend of mine. He has great tips. I've bought his book. I have, I have not done any of these things in spite of their efforts. I have made sure that I pay the money that is owed to them and I do it the right way. Obviously, I could always ask for favors and I could always, you know, circumvent the system if I wanted to. I know plenty of people who have, but that's not who I am. That's not who I am. Whether I had the money or not, I've supported everybody along the way as best as I can monetarily. I have exchanged energy if I didn't have the money. You know, we've exchanged services before. Uh, when Mint Worthy was first coming up, she and I were partnered together at, in a coaching um, seminar. And so we learned from each other and we, you know, uh, helped each other understand better and to learn and equip ourselves so that we are better at what we do and and these are the things that i i love about this takisha artist is a friend of mine i i was in the same coaching program with mint worthy as well and vanessa and takisha and i we we spoke about many things and i i do my best to support everybody around me and i don't think it's too much to ask when i say i love people for listening in i appreciate you guys for all of your support but if you find something that i've said that was helpful please kindly share it and tag me let me know that you shared it because i'd be happy to shout you out as well and more than that i want to know that my work is making a difference so when people leech off of you and take what you've spent time and patience to create right it kind of it kind of makes me feel sad for humanity at large. I, I know I can't reach everybody and not everybody will understand. Most people will get offended because they're not in a place where they want to realize what it is that they're doing. But I want to make sure you guys understand. As disappointed and a little defeated as I feel at the moment, I know what I'm doing is right. I know I'm approaching it from a loving standpoint. Uh, the first thing I did when I found out that this person was using my images was to comment on her photo and not to be a bitch or anything but I said hey you know what thank you for sharing my post I really appreciate it I am happy that you're supporting me and I did that on the two posts that she had copied my images from and from there she messaged me so I'm trying to go about it the right way I'm not trying to shut people down or shame people that's not what I'm about you guys know I like to educate and not put you in your place educate more like hey Take a look at it from this perspective. If you had created something and I stole it and told everybody it was mine, you'd feel a little bit sad as well. So I'm doing the best that I can. I'm not perfect. I'm sure I'm making mistakes along the way. If I do make something, you know, noticeably as a mistake, please let me know. Please. I've had so many people come and tell me, why don't you speak in Tamil? Aren't you proud of Tamil? Hell yeah, I'm proud of Tamil. But I don't think I have the vocabulary um, to a point where I should really do the language justice or actually reach you guys with the kind of passion that I do have in English. I've had people tell me, slow down, I can't hear you too fast. And I've had people say, you know what, I don't like the way you say certain things because it makes me feel like you're belittling something or belittling this or making something out to be more than someone else's trauma, like the comparison of traumas. I understand all of that. And it's important for me to get this feedback because if you don't tell me these things, I will assume that I'm okay. I've had people that, you know, get on podcasts and talk about whatever they feel like. And that's cool, you know, as long as you're talking about your experience. But the minute you start making blanket statements and telling people this is the way it is, right, then you're educating people, but in a manner which could be hurtful or harmful to some people who are still impressionable and young and don't know enough about life yet. I've had so many people come to me and say, oh my gosh, you know, have you heard this? They were being rude. They were being crude. They were socially unattractive. They were doing something that was actually... Uh, very degrading to a certain community. They were, um, you know, being elitist or racist or any of those things. And I understand if you're coming at it from my point of view. I like this. My opinion. I get it. I'm not going to shame you for that. But but the minute you start telling people that this is the way it is, you got to just accept it. That there's only way that this could be, right? then it becomes dangerous and I get I get nervous about those things. So I try really hard to watch what I say. This is why when people tell me, oh my gosh, were you talking about beyond this podcast? I usually try really hard to give you several examples of what it is I'm talking about so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not ever revealing anyone's identity or, or, or putting anyone's pain on display. Most of the time it's mine. Most of the time it's mine because I, it's my right to put on my, my pain on display. And a lot of times I will tell you 360 degrees of the situation. I make sure that when I do explain these things, if I do include my mother, I let her know, you know what? 
this is from my perspective. This is what I saw of her life. But I didn't realize that she also has a perspective and she probably saw me as the bad guy. And I'm trying to make sure you understand. There is no black and white. There's a lot of gray. But understand when people put themselves out there, it took me a long time to actually be okay with putting my face out there or to do videos in the first place. I was so comfortable with audio. You don't have to see my face. You know my voice though. And when I finally started doing video, I was like, you know what? No, I want to be an inspirational, motivational page that teaches about emotional intelligence. And I want you to know I'm not some gimmicky person hiding behind other people's quotes. These are my thoughts. These are my you know, experiences. And this is my face now. I'm owning the fact that, yeah, I'm talking about this. I'm not hiding. I'm not pretending that, you know, that I'm some expert in a corner of the world somewhere. I'm not a bot. I'm real. I don't buy my followers. I don't sign up for things and spam people. I do the best I can with what I know. So I'm here trying to be real and authentic in a world where everyone's just looking for likes and comments and, and shares. They're looking for, you know, that social dilemma um, algorithm basically. And I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to actually effect real change here. So please, if you're going to share anyone's work, please credit them. If you see me in my stories, you see tons, tons of quotes from hundreds of different pages and they're from different, different pages all the time. And I always, always, always tag them in the bottom because I've noticed in the algorithm sometimes when you share someone's work, it doesn't always let them know that you shared it unless you physically tag them. So I do that. I do the due diligence. I'm not telling you to do anything that I don't do myself. If I know who to tag, I'm going to tag them. If I pull it from their page, I'm going to tag them. Why? Because you took time to create something for the masses. And I happened to run across it and it turned my head. It caught my attention. It hit my heartstrings. And I want to do the same for you. If it affected me in such a positive way, I want to make sure I pass it forward. I like that idea. I like that concept a lot. This is how you build a community. There is enough for all of us to succeed. And the best way for all of us to succeed is if each one of us, when we have a chance, helps the next person up. So, all of this to say that, yes, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little dejected. Nothing I'm not going to bounce back from, I'm telling you right now. But I decided to do this podcast while I'm in this phase, in this mood. You know me, I try to you know recover first before I do any of this. Because I wanted to clearly effectively let you guys know how I feel about this and the fact that I think it's a little disrespectful and I hope you you think that the way I handle it was classy and appropriate because I never want to shame anybody but I need people to understand yes people will come after you and they will tell you you can't do stuff yes people will steal your work after they told you that you can't do stuff and pretend that you know what they knew all along they've known you since when and finally when you make it big They'll tell everybody how close you guys are. And I get that. I understand. I'm not big yet, but I am doing the work every single day. And I am proud of the work that I'm doing. And I'm happy with the changes I'm making. And it's not just other people that I'm trying to transform. I'm transforming myself at the same time. I am my own best client. Everything that I'm doing I'm teaching you guys to do and everything that I'm asking you guys to do are things that I'm also doing I will lead from the front always I will try to be my my own version of my brand not version my own brand stand alone and I try really hard not to be influenced by the trends that are going on at the moment now if something does catch my eye it's usually something that no one else has picked up on and I like that about me so please if you find that any of my work has helped you, if you find that a poem I've written or a podcast I've recorded or a video that I've posted or a quote that I happen to write on Twitter, any of those things matter to you or feel good to you or even if they feel bad to you, please let me know. If you're going to share it, tag me in it. If I did something that was offensive to you, if you're going to share it to the world and tell everybody that I'm a completely reckless person, and I'm, you know, I'm over here spouting a bunch of nonsense, please tag me. Please tag me. Okay? Give credit where credit is due. That's how all of us succeed. And that's how all of us learn to trust each other. You get me? I love you guys. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.